quick note that you're gonna see the gelatin plates kind of stacked up like this. Something very important to remember is that they are sandwiched between two pieces of plastic and this plastic we wanna save because I need that to put them back in storage. So when we take these off, if you see one laying around, um, let's make sure that we keep track of them. All right, so this is the setup for doing some gelatin printing. First of all, let's talk about these jelly plates. These are ones that can be used over and over again if we take care of them. They really do feel like jello, but they're not indestructible. That means you can totally rip it and poke a hole in it and cut it, but please don't do that because that would ruin the material. So yes, it is squishy. We can all acknowledge it's squishy, but please don't like stab your fingernail into it or poke it with a pencil, okay? Let's try and keep it nice and safe. One side of it will have this thick plastic on it, which can peel off for cleaning. We're gonna go ahead and just leave it on there. All right, so we've got our gelatin plate. Um, I have this piece of cardboard kind of behind it. Um, we got some scrap paper. We have newspaper around because this gets really messy. We've got some things to make textures. I've got some stencils here. I even have some beautiful flowers that we can try to use. So let's get into it. Um, first thing that we're gonna do is put some acrylic paint on. Acrylic paint will not wash out of your clothes. So you might wanna wear an apron or just be careful when you're using this material. So what we're gonna do is, oh, awesome, okay, it doesn't have a seal on it. I'm going to just put a little bit of paint on, just like a little teeny line. You don't need to make a huge puddle because if you make a huge puddle, it's gonna make a mess. We wanna be able to take our brayer and roll it out to cover the whole plate. So I'm gonna roll out my paint and I pick this blue. And if you feel like it's not quite enough, you can put a little bit more on, but if you have too much, it's really hard to take it off, okay? So here I have this. Some paint works better than other, other paint. All right, I'm gonna roll it on with my brayer. That's what this roller's called, and I'll set it off to the side. And now, if I were to print this, it would just be a solid blue. I'm gonna take some textures and lay it across my plate. Maybe I'll use this stencil here. Um, yeah, I'll stick with that for now. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm actually gonna use a scrap piece of paper for this first print. And I'm going to press down gently over the whole thing. And then I'm going to peel it up. And there's my first print. Now I use scrap paper, but if I really like it, this could be your final piece. It's cool. I like it. So that's my first one. And I'm gonna make sure that if I wanted to save this, that I write my name on it. And I'm gonna put it in the drying rack with my name on it. You know, I wanna to talk to you about something actually. Let's make sure we, let's do an R and see what happens. My R is facing the correct way on here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, print it and see if it's still correct after I print it. What do you think's gonna happen? Oh no, it's backwards. So I was realizing this whole time I was printing with an M, which is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if it's forward or back, but certain letters will matter. They're gonna print backwards if you lay them like that. So it's an easy solution. What you would end up doing is actually putting your stencil the other way so that when you print it, it'll appear the correct way. You wanna see what I'm talking about? All right. We're gonna put our R backwards this time. I'm gonna grab one of these prints I made before and layer it on. Lift it up. Voila, now my R is facing the correct way. And again, check out those layers happening. Layering is where it's at when it comes to this gelatin printmaking. There's gonna be a lot of prints, so please make sure you remember to write your name on it. So now I'm gonna peel these textures off. Do not throw these away. They're wet with paint, but that doesn't mean 
that we can't reuse them. So I'm gonna kind of carefully set it aside and you're gonna notice this is gonna get messy pretty quickly. All right, now I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a final paper. I'm gonna press it on. Hopefully I didn't talk too much and have the paint dry, we'll see. Oh no, good. Oh, cool, okay, the M kind of dried, but that lacy texture you can see showed up. So with just that one plate, I made these two prints. Now, this is where you need to start thinking about layering and using different colors because this one's cool. This one's, uh, I know it didn't turn out very great right here. So instead of throwing it away or giving up on it, I'm gonna keep printing on this. I'm gonna say, you're not done yet. Okay, I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna pick a different color. And this is helpful to think about the color wheel. You want colors that are side by side on the color wheel. Um, if you're gonna use the same brayer, if they're gonna mix. Um, I shouldn't say that. You can do whatever colors you want, but if you pick colors that are side by side on the color wheel, they're going to mix new colors, make new colors, like blue and yellow will make green. But if you did opposites, so the opposite of blue would be orange. If I put orange on here, it would end up making a neutral color. So more like a, like a brown or a gray. And if you're looking for neutral colors, then that's what you'd wanna do. Okay, see now it blended together and it made a green. Um, I'm going to, look at that, it's a cute little dog. Put the dog on there and I'm gonna print. This is the one that I didn't really like before. And lift it up. Cool, now I'm gonna take that dog off. I'm not gonna throw it away, I'm just gonna set it aside. And maybe I'll go back to this first print that I made and print on top of it. Let me see what happens. All right, so these stencils on this one are not popping up as much. I think it's because I'm talking too much. If I move a little bit faster, it might work better. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go into time-lapse and just start printing a little bit more. Something else we can have fun with is digging through the Kind of forgotten art that we have so we have all this no-name art over there so think about like finding a cool background that you could try and print on top of some of these papers are absolutely beautiful and we can reclaim them and use them for our own so i like this one and it has a lot of blues and cool colors so i think what i'll do is an opposite and i'll use some warm colors on top Now, look at that. So starting to build up these layers is really fun to play around with. Um, maybe I'll try and print that M again on this one. See how that second print looks. It's called a kind of a ghost print the second time around. All right, can't really see it, but it's looking really pretty right here. I'm digging the layers and the colors. It's just really fun to look at. All right, so we've done some bright colors. Let's see what happens if we get a little neutral here. I think I'm gonna set this one aside and let it dry. And then I think printing like a color on top of it would be really fun. So that one's gonna go over here for now. I have this one I did earlier, just a blue background. So maybe what I'll do now is play around with the, let's do black. What is that? A piece of plastic got on there. All right, what should we do? Should I stick with my M? One single layer often is not the ticket. It can be. 
but it's fun to layer things up. This one I am not happy with. Not yet. Let's see what happens if I print it here. Sometimes you just keep printing and something will happen. Something magic will happen. Oh, yeah. There's some magic happening there now. That's cool. All right. Um, last thing let's talk about is, again, playing around with adding more than one color on your on your plate. The trick of that is not overdoing it so that you have way too much paint. Oops, I didn't want to do that one. I'm going to do this one. So now I've got all my primaries on here, which means if they mix together, they're going to mix new colors. I'm grabbing a fresh brayer here. There's some black on this sprayer. So you can, instead of using these stencils, you can just kind of get creative with the paint itself on the plate and seeing how they blend together. And these would be, we call non-representational prints where they're not supposed to look like anything. It's just for the fun of the color, the fun of the the mixing of things that are happening here. Maybe I'll try and print this on this found paper and see what happens. <laughs> cool, all right. That almost looks like a little person. So you can start to get kind of fun with this stuff, just enjoying the process of it. It doesn't always have to look like something. It can simply be that you like the colors and the blending that's happening. All right, let's talk about cleanup. So when you're all done, make sure that all of your prints go in the drying rack with their name on them, with your name on them. So here, let's go look. Right here, we got prints over here with the names on them. Um, these brayers we're going to put in a bucket in the big sink with soapy water and I will clean them up. The gelatin plates, what you're going to do to clean them is you're going to take some scrap paper or paper towel and you're just going to kind of try to keep printing until all the paint is off. So you kind of just print and print and print until all the paint is off and then um, I will clean them up in the sink afterwards. So we'll put them back on the cart once you kind of try and remove all the paint first, just a scrap piece of paper that you can throw away. All right, have fun.